Hi, I'm Femi OK, and you're in the stream. Today, Chechnya's pro-Russia leader says he intends to step down in April. His announcement has received some very mixed reactions. Some are begging him to stay. Others think he's playing political games with the Kremlin. Now, our digital producer, Malika Balao, has been living up to her name. She's been doing some <laughs> digital snooping investigation mm -hmm. into Chechnya's leader. Mm -hmm. And especially onto his social media accounts, which uh, really a trove of information they're looking forward to getting into it. Ramzan Kadyrov is a unique character in Russian politics with a complicated public image to match. And that's on full display on his social media accounts, especially on his Instagram page, where he's embraced his contradictions. For example, like anyone, Kadyrov posts his fair share of pictures with his friends and family, not to mention cute animal photos like these. But he's also sure to display his tough side on Instagram. And of course, he shows where his loyalties lie, as in these pictures with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, we'll dive into the Chechen leader's political image in today's show, so tweet us your thoughts. Hi, I'm Rafiv Shwejati, director of the Foundation to Restore Equality and Education in Syria. I also represent the local coordination committees in Syria, and I'm in the stream. Ranzam Kadyrov, the 39-year-old Kremlin-backed leader of Chechnya, recently told the Russian channel NTV that his time has passed and that the nation needs to find a new person once his term expires on April the 5th. His announcement triggered a social media campaign with supporters posting videos and pictures begging him to stay in power. On Instagram, a Russian hashtag that translates to Ramzan don't go has been used more than eight thousand times since March the 1st. But some analysts are not buying Kadyrov's de declaration, claiming that the move is part of a larger political strategy to gain more support and benefits from the Kremlin. Now, Chechnya is officially part of Russia. Historically, it's been home to movements that have fought for independence. But Moscow has relied very heavily on Kadyrov to deal with the separatists and maintain control. It also provides federal funding to the region in exchange for political support for Russian President Vladimir Putin. So how will all of this play out ahead of Kadyrov's official last day in office? To help us discuss this, we're joined by Usman Fazal Auli. He is the foreign minister of the independent Chechen government in exile. And right here in the studio, we have Tatya Lemonjava, an independent analyst, analyst on Russia and Eurasia, and Fatima Tlosova a reporter with Voice of America who's done extensive work on Russia and the North Caucasus. So it's good to have you all here. So we're getting to know this Chechen leader a little bit well better today. So Tati, if you could tell us one story that really sums up his personality from your perspective, what would it be? Well, it would be that he's pretty fearless, I guess. Um, about two months ago, he publicly denounced and cursed Stalin which is not something that anybody else in Russia as a politician would allow themselves to do. I, I, and if you did that, what would be the rep repercussions if you weren't actually Kadyrov? I mean, there would be a very strong public backlash, first of all. And right. then, of course, most Russian politicians would try to contradict you and explain to you why that is incorrect. Aha. Uzman. There's been no such backlash. Wow, okay. Usman, uh, uh, yeah. uh, something that describes Kadyrov for us as an international audience, some story where you're like, this, this is his character, this is his personality. Well, uh, listen, I'm very surprised when you guys call him Chechen leader. He is not a Chechen leader. He is classical Russian colonial instrument in my country. That is the, his behavior. And Kadyrov was been not elected. Kadir, nobody liked him, actually. Mm -hmm. You're showing the pictures, you know, that people say Ramzan don't go. However, I know definitely that people announcing such statement, but what they're thinking, I know, they think don't go, just run and disappear. That is the Ramzan. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, there's no way of really finding that out. Or is there, Fatima? Because you reported from Chechnya, you talked to people. Um, how do they feel about their leader? Well, actually, first I wanted to uh, respond to Titus' uh, comment about his courageous personality. Uh -huh. uh, a friend of mine, uh, a Russian journalist, Anna Politkovskaya, who was reporting on Chechnya, and was killed in Moscow, and many relate this killing to Kadyrov. She called him a coward. 
and that describes him much better than uh, something you can, you can call courageous. Uh, the same man, for instance, uh, upon request from Kremlin, canceled all the memorial, uh, so, uh, the memorial day of Chechen deportation by Stalin. He moved it from the day of deportation to some other day in the calendar. Who would do something so like that? Let me that? just explain. The day of declaration is in incredibly important in Chechen history. Tati, do you want to explain what that day is? Well, I think Fatima is doing a great job of yeah. that. But yes, it's very important in Chechen history because um, Stalin deported a, a, the majority of the Chechen population outside of Chechnya. Yeah. And they were only able to return much, much later to the right. region. So that's So to cancel that day, is, is that like erasing part of your history, or Chechen's history? It's assaulting personally every living Chechen and the, che the, the memory of those who died during the deportation. But he's a Chechen, why would he do that? Because he, as uh, Osman said, he's um, more an instrument of Kremlin and he cares more about his personal well-being and his position than about the Chechen people. He never did actually care for Chechen people as much as anybody else would do in his position. You know, Fatima, it's interesting, uh, picking up on, on what you're saying, but also on what Osman mentioned about not really uh, having support for uh, him being the Chechen leader. I put that in quotes there. There's some difference of opinion online. So this is Sophia. She says, I do believe that he has limited support from people. The public outcry is stage propaganda, she says, and you can't put it past him. But on the other hand, we got a video comment from Susanna, and she has a slightly different view on what people in Chechnya might feel. So have a listen to her. I think it's quite understandable that people who benefit from his, from him being the president will support him and, and send messages saying, please stay our president. And, and the whole campaign looks a bit fabricated if you look to Instagram. But it's also that when pieces have started moving in, in politics in Chechnya, it has meant war. So ordinary people would perhaps rather take this stability than to risk war. Well, actually, if you rule by fear and by military force, this is what actually uh, Kadyrov is doing. You're going to get some kind of support. The true part is that there are many, many young people in Chechnya who absolutely uh, respect him. He shows a power and he is very wealthy and he's very successful. So they see him as a role model. There are thousands of young people who actually in reality support them. But when we speak about the whole Chechen population, you know, they endured so much. Look at what Russia is doing today in Syria. The whole world is stunned by this, um, uh, you know, um, the bombings that Russia is conducting, we are not stunned. In the Caucasus, Russia was doing that for many years. The Grozny, the capital of Chechnya, was completely turned into the desert. There were no standing buildings. But if you look at Grozny today, it looks amazing. But go beyond Grozny. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you mentioned uh, Kadyrov's Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go deeper into his uh, pictures, what stuns me the most is that he is not ashamed to show his pictures when he is a guest with his mom. His home, inside his home, it's so ostentatiously rich. And that is in the country where the majority of villages are ruined. People are very, very poor, and most of the population of Chechnya is suffering from PTSD. Like 90% of the population getting no help, no good medical coverage uh, or service, and other economic is horrible. And he is not ashamed to post those pictures to demonstrate how rich he is. So that describes Fatima, him a you lot. know, you, you, you mentioned his, me, his mother. Me. 
Uh, Uzman, I hear you, but I, I just want to get this in because Fatima mentioned uh, Kadyrov's mother. We got a comment about his father, and I'll pose this to you. This is sure. Musa. He says, a lot of people have suffered under Kadyrov's regime, he says. I personally spent almost a year in captivity under that regime. And he goes on to say, I am more than confident that a more loyal and dedicated person than he, the Kremlin, will not find. For the sake of money and power, Kadyrov has forgotten the murder of his father. What does that have to do uh, with today's current reality? Can you explain that for our international audience? Well, l listen, guys, the, the question is more simple than you think, because uh, I actually, I knew his father, Ahmad Kadyrov. I knew him from first war in Chechnya. But Kadyrov, his father, he have a different view. And this view is um, actually his son, he is forgetting the view and behavior of his father. Nevertheless, the question is more simple. Since from beginning of the 2003 and 4, we saw that the Russians, they try to revert this interstate conflict as a conflict so-called Chechenization. And the world leaders as well was being, you know, willing to accept the Russian version. Then from this time, they raised Kadyrov as a colonial instrument inside of the Chechnya, who terrorizing still, you know, the, all the people in my country. So that's who is the Kadyrov. I don't know, uh, uh, of course, Fatima says that he has some followers. Definitely, yes, he has some followers. The people, you know, who are living with him, who are working with him, who are taking the benefits from him, of course, they 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 following him and they support him. And I can name you also Mr. Jean-Claude Vada, Claude Vada Van Damme, Mr. Mike Tyson and others, you know, they visiting Chechnya. Mm -hmm. You think they visiting Chechnya just because they like Kadyrov. Excuse me. They coming to Chechnya, you know, to make a propaganda for Kadyrov. So, and Usman, take I, I, I have pictures. I have that. pictures here. Um, this is from the Guardian yeah, so newspaper. Well, I've got. I see Gerald Dapadu, um yes, and then Gerard, I see Gerard Depardieu, uh, yeah? Tyson, and then is Tyson. this Maradona? Maradona. I, yes. I almost didn't it recognize is. him. We won't go into that. Yes, it is Diego. Yes. Yes. Goodness uh, me. All right. They, so they, they, they there was some of the money ju just because they come to Chechnya sure. and show up, you know, together with wow, the Wow. So, the, so these are paid appearances. You're saying, Usman? They're, they're not Excuse there because me, they, you know, they the want money, to visit Rosny. The money, the money which Ramzan paid to them, this money oh. taken from all entire Chechen nation as a bribe and as an extortion. All right, let me just take a pause for a little bit of history here, because Malika, you brought up uh, uh, Kadyrov's dad. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason this is important is because um, during the first Chechnya war, uh, Kadyrov fought as a separatist against Russia. The second uh, Chechnya war, he fought against the separatists with Russia. His dad was killed in the fight, so that was the, that's what that uh, reference was to that earlier comment that was put it up there into the mix. So he basically changed sides. Yes, more or less. His father yeah. was killed after the war was concluded, but sure. it was part of a terrorist attack. Right. And um, and this is really important because he was a separatist, and now he's probably Putin's closest ally. In the region? Yes. In the region. And basically the barter agreement was that in exchange for um, controlling the region unilaterally. Let me show you how close an ally is. I'm going to show you a little clip, and this is from a witness documentary on Al Jazeera English that aired in 2015. And the journalist went back to Chechnya 10 years after the last Chechnya conflict. I want you to look at Kadyrov's t shirt. You will see the face of Vladimir Putin on his t shirt and listen to him. Listen to these close ties between Chechnya and Russia. <laughs> Yes, man, I'm just curious as to, so if Kadyrov really does step down, who will be his successor? What will happen to Chechnya? Well, I have to tell you, it is, uh, he has no intention to, 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 to resign. 
This is nothing but a uh, political flirt. He handed in his uh, notice. He wants to spend more time with his family, Usman. No, 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 no. Excuse me. He has no intention to resign, uh, definitely. It is, as I say, political flirt. flirt. He want me, you know, to be. He want to be uh, here in uh, Kremlin because of a lot of irritation inside uh, in all entire Russian Federation about the behavior of the Kadyrov and his people, particularly in Moscow, because you know the, his uh, gangsters they making extortions, they kidnapping the people, they kidnapping the businessmen, you know, in all entire of the Russian, and Putin allow him to do that because they say that oh. Ramzan Kadyrov working very effectively. He built up the rebuilt the Grozny city, but nevertheless, I just have to tell you that it's nothing that only the center of the downtown of Grozny was being rebuilt up during of the of the of job of Mr. Kadyrov. Simply, he has a he has a ultimate goal initially to hide the tracks of the war in Chechnya and this uh, this uh, this job he did perfectly mm -hmm. well there's another goal here that I want to share Tati I'll share it with you this is uh, the view of someone online this mm -hmm. is Bangkok Dave he says what he's doing is communicating to Putin and to his Chechen subjects how indispensable he is and he's pressuring Putin to publicly reconfirm his rule and he goes on to say Putin has a quasi father-son relationship with him and genuine affection for him and that dynamic is part of Putin's attachment can you explain this relationship for us. It sounds complicated. I think that's a pretty good way of summarizing the relationship. Uh, Putin respects this sort of unabashed uh, ambition that Kadyrov shows in this behavior, in this very provocative behavior. He clearly expects, he's put this at Putin's feet. He has to act now. He declared that I will accept whatever decision Putin will make, whether or not he wants me to stay in power. So he clearly is challenging Putin to publicly ask him to stay in power because he considers him to be the best potential candidate to do this. What are the other options, Fatima? Well, actually, I think this game is perceived uh, somewhat uh, wrong um, by the Western and even by the Russians because the gamekeeper he is, is Kremlin, not Kadyrov. Kadyrov just responds to the signals that Putin is sending to him down. And, uh, Why do you say that? Because uh, what I see uh, is going on in Russia is uh, a very clear game, political game. Uh, the agenda for Putin, the immediate agenda, goal, is to show the Russian people who were very angry at Kadyrov because he was becoming more than just Chechen figure. And Putin doesn't want that. So for Putin, the immediate goal was to show the Russian people that he is in control of Chechnya, not Ramzan Kadyrov. Actually, at some point, he did reach that goal, but not in the full what he wanted, because he showed the Russian people that he is in control of Kadyrov doesn't mean he's in control of Chechnya. Mm -hmm. And okay. you see, during all this exchange of signals, we saw that the Russian Ministry of Defense announces military drill in Chechnya never happened after the Second Chechen War. Huh. First time. And it coincides somehow with the attacks that the uh, Russian oppositional leaders are allowed uh, uh, to um, against uh, Ramzan Kadyrov. Uh -huh. Hmm. Let me show you something, Usman, here. I I'm sure you've seen yeah. social media. Um, there's this big, big campaign. There's the little boy here. He's, he's beside himself. He's crying. He's like, Rasman, don't go. Have a look at this. <laughs> and his mom is saying, just tell, just tell Kadyrov what you really think and feel. Well, I have to uh, and tell then, you this. And then we've got, I mean, there's, there are pages and pages of this. Rasman, don't go. So much of this. Some of this has got to be real. Some, how, how do you lead a, 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 a region and, and not have popularity at all? Some people must be very supportive of him. Well, I have to tell you very honestly how it's going naturally in Chechnya.
Mm -hmm. For instance, if the Ramzan need a huge demonstration to show to Moscow his loyalty, they he ordered you know to all the school directors, university institution, the factories, private business, and other companies, that he give them the quote, quotation that each unit should send to the demonstration 100, 300, 500, 1,000 person, etc. And finally, you can see in the downtown of the Chechnya thousands of the people. Uh, significantly, uh, it's, it appears, you know, the last time when uh, when Ramzan Kadiro says that, oh, he, want, he would like to resign, let the Moscow or Kremlin find another candidate for this job, etc. This, uh, actually, it is a very cynical that some parents use emotions of their kids. And I'm more than sure this is close people to Ramzan Kadyrov. Mm -hmm. Nobody from village and nobody, you know, who uh, actually who, who living very difficult, uh, uh, taking, have very difficult life in Chechnya. I want to throw something else in here into the mix. This is something that people online want to talk about, and especially because it affects what's going on in other parts of the world right now. So this is Christo, and he says, consensus in Russia is if funding and tolerating Kadyrov is abruptly stopped, then Chechnya will turn into an ISIS, ISIL state overnight. And so that, of course, references uh, the idea that there are foreign fighters that come from Chechnya that are now in other parts of uh, the world and in the Middle East, and what this will mean if that funding and support stops from Russia. What do you think it will mean? Well, that seems to be one of the signals, as Fatima mentioned, that Kadyrov is sending to Moscow, that um, it's known that over 2,500 men from the North Caucasus are fighting in the war in Syria, and Putin is outspokenly fearful of them potentially returning to the region and causing further instability there. So that is a very big factor in him potentially agreeing to the terms that they're slowly negotiating here. Has there been any reaction so far to Kadyrov saying he's going to step down? April the 5th is just around the corner, Fatima. Has uh, Putin said anything? Has there been any conversations that you know of that are already happening in Russia about this? Well, the relationship between Putin and Kadyrov was very direct. Kadyrov could pick up his cell phone and call to Putin's cell phone directly anytime he wanted to. For the last uh, few months, that changed. Putin wasn't answering Kadyrov's phone calls, and that's why we saw all this exchange of signals. There were middlemen, and they were uh, signaling Kadyrov how to behave, what exactly to say. And the reaction from the experts who really know the situation in Chechnya was very skeptical. Most of them say that Kadyrov is just bluffing. He's not going to step down. But in my opinion, he might, only if Putin decides. If Putin finds a safe solution, somebody to replace Kadyrov with, he's going to go for this, mm. as loyal as Kadyrov. And loyalty depends on money, on support, on personal backup. So Kadyrov, I think, he can, uh, what can satisfy Kadyrov to step down, uh -huh. right? I think he's obsessed with his father's um, Islamic legacy. His father was a mufti in Chechnya. And for instance, if Kadyrov doesn't care at all about his reputation in the West, where his people attack uh, journalists, Western journalists, he does care about a lot, enormously about his reputation in the Muslim world. He wants to be perceived as a Muslim leader okay. of the Caucasus. Okay, Tatya. So um, I agree with Fatima in, in saying that if Putin were to give the signal to Kadyrov, he would step down and probably assume some kind of a religious position to try and continue with his um, influence in the region. But that is very unlikely because there is a, a basically a power vacuum there. He has consistently gone on eliminating potential competition for himself in the region. Well, so. um, I, can, uh, I disagree with that because when we, uh, everybody who says that uh, this is uh, uh, facts that are against, against Kadyrov stepping down, so w w they say he has an army, he has an oil, but it's all consequential, he doesn't, consequential.
Katia, Fatima, Usman, thank you so much for being part of this conversation. We are taking it online. I know, Malika, there's some more community that want to get in as well. And you'll find us at stream.adazira.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. This is the Streams Online Post Show. We've been talking about Chechnya's pro-Russia leader, Razvan Kadyrov, and his intention to step down at the end of his term in April. Malika, where do you want to take us next? Well, Tatsuya was talking about uh, there, there might be or will be a vacuum. And so I wanted to pick up on that. This is a tweet we got from Sophia Osman. I will uh, pose this to you. Sophia says, even in the unlikely situation that Kadyrov does step down, his replacement will be a Russian puppet, and it won't make a difference to Putin. What do you make of that? Um, well, let us let me tell you uh, like that. My statement actually will be will based on the on the on the law. The Chechen nation have a right to elect their president. As far as today, it's not possible to have free and fair election in my country it doesn't matter who will be you know the leader so-called leader or the russian colonial instrument in chechnya mr kadyrov or mr ivanov or mr petrov it doesn't matter actually um i want to show you something here which is um sure potentially quite disturbing this was we talked about kadyrov's instagram account this um uh, this picture popped up on his Instagram account. In fact, it was a little video, and it had crosshairs, and in, in the crosshairs, uh, uh, opponents of Kadyrov. Yes. Um, yes. That is disturbing, and probably even more disturbing when the image was taken down. What does that, what, what does that say? Listen, oh, it, it so, is, excuse it, me, opponents of Putin. Yes, yes, I understand that. Which is exactly that. the same thing, probably. Opponents we of have, Putin, opponents of Kadyrov. Yes, we have very fresh, um, fresh, uh, uh, moment when yesterday just because 100 meter before the border of the Chechen Republic the Kadyrov gangsters stopped the vehicle where was being um, European journalists and the Russian human rights defenders all of them was been taken out of the vehicle minivan they was been beaten cruelly and the minivan was being burned so it means Mr. Kadyrov when he ignoring you know the international the human right or the rules of the journalist etc if he closed the border to chechnya that means he have something to hide he hiding you know the whole entire chechen nation all entire people and his personal behavior what he doing in chechnya you know each worker paying for kadir of at least 10 percent of his salary and you know how it much the salary in Chechnya? It is 40% of the similar working in Moscow. Do you know that uh, each businessman who working, who have a business in Chechnya, they pay to Kadyrov minimum 25% to so-called Kadyrov Foundation. Do you know that Osman, if you not Osman, pay... How, Osman, how do you know that? What are your sources? I know that. I know many things, you know, because we daily, you know, online with the Chechen people. Uh -huh. Today's communication is working very good. We have a video materials, uh -huh. we have a interviews, we have a daily, you know, each day online phone connection, Skype connection, Viber connection, WhatsApp connection. Uh -huh. It is many possibilities. Sure. You Talk, know, talking about and connections. When I mentioned, and, and, when yeah. I mentioned, when I mentioned Jean Claude Van Damme, Van Damme. Who, who was been paid by Mr. Kadyrov. Uh -huh. I have to tell you, Mr. Van Damme received the money which was being extorted from our people by the Ramzan and his people. All right, so Usman, I'm, I'm going to say that that is your perspective from your sources. It's not something that we can actually clarify and just confirm here on Al Jazeera. Malika? Oh, well, Usman mentioned uh, he speaks daily to the Chechen people. Um, we don't speak daily to them, but we did speak to a few for this show. So I want to play a video comment, uh, Fatima, and I'll pose this to you. This is from Ahmed. Have a listen to what he had to say. For more than 25 years, I have been a direct participant in the military and political process between Russia and Chechnya.
The information which is usually announced by the press departments or the Russian agencies is intended to divert attention from objective facts. I'm deeply convinced that the violence in Chechnya can be stopped only by a political settlement. A political farce of upcoming so-called elections of President Kadyrov had nothing in common with a real political process. You reported in Chechnya for years. What do you think people want to see politically? What would a real political process actually look like? Well, the political process in Chechnya is not an exception from the Russian political process. When you have an authoritarian leader, a regime, which is based on um, violating uh, the country's constitution, uh, all the possible uh, human rights and media rights. You do not expect something to change in uh, one uh, separate region. So Chechnya follows the path of uh, the whole Russia. The only problem with that is that in Chechnya, everything is multiplied. When we speak about human rights violation, and I completely agree with Mr. Zakayev on this, people live in Chechnya. When I say that, you can probably think that, you know, fear, what does it mean? I'm just going to tell you an example. Every single mother in Chechnya is absolutely terrified that Kadyrov or his guys are going to notice their daughters. What does it mean? The girl going to disappear. The best case scenario, she's going to be a sex toy in one of his or his friend's uh, harems. And it's almost legalized in Chechnya. He is openly, publicly speaking about uh, polygamy. Uh, he is speaking about the role of the woman reduced to housewife or sex toy and reproduction. That's all they need from the women. I mean, OK, if he wants a Sharia law, how he can explain that many of his guys, including himself, do not limit themselves with four wives. There are dozens of girls, and dozens disappear forever if they do not manage to escape. That's what fear means. And that comes for the boys, too, because everybody can be labeled a terrorist, a Wahhabi, anything. It, indeed, he has been outspoken about his support for the traditional uh, po polygamous system. He has actually said that he has been looking for a second wife for himself, but hasn't so far found one beautiful enough. I want to show you some, uh, I'm always showing Usman stuff. Usman, lean forward to, to your computer. I want to show you some of the, the images that we found, um, satirical images. So here we have uh, um, the leader of Chechnya and then the leader of Russia. And then uh, Putin is, is putting a, a little medal on him. Uh, another one. Um, we had this translated by our wonderful uh, Russia colleague Katya in our newsroom. And it basically, uh, Putin is singing, don't leave, stay with me because it's beautiful out here. And then this one, a little bit of Photoshop. Here we have the leader of North Korea. And then here we have the leader of uh, Chechnya. Uh, I don't feel I need to add any more context to this. I'm just wondering, inside Chechnya, uh, the spirit of Chechnyans, how are they right now from the people that you're in touch with, the people that you connect with? How are they feeling about this potential change of power? Uh, one thing I promise you, I will be very objective. Daily when we talk with the different people, we even talk with the people who are working today in law enforcement in Chechnya because the Chechnya is a small country and everybody knows each other. Their perspective and their view is very different. Very different with those which we see, you know, in the internet and the Russian, the Ramzan PR company, etc. Of course, they understand that they have no choice that they work in Chechnya to take care of the families, uh, to take care of the kids, of the olders, and, and, and so on. Mm. But uh, I have to tell you, 
uh, when we start this meeting, you know, with this interview, I told you the, what is the view of the church and people. They say they don't, they, they just announcing Ramzan don't go. Uh -huh. But what they think, we know what they think. They think don't go, just run and disappear. And about uh, a political solution, when we talk about that, political solution, do you, do you know that, guys? We still don't have any legitimate agreement with the Russia. No single agreement. Each time we have a war in Chechnya, and then the Russians, they force us, you know, to be under jurisdiction of the Russian Federation. That this is the same, the same, the same view we have today, the same situation. And we have a no choice, actually. As far as the international community doesn't care about the small nation, even we lost during of the 20 year, 300 human lives in Chechnya, including 42,000 childs. All right, Osman and Fatima and Tati, I have to say thank you very much for giving us insight into this. I would say he's charismatic, a very charismatic leader. Um, and, and taking us behind a story that we only ever see when there are headlines, <laughs> headlines in Russia and headlines in Chechnya and usually about terrorism or terrorist attacks or some kind of violence. This is a much deeper dive and thank you very much for helping us do that. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on The Stream.